Mr. Speaker, I feel a certain sense of relief this afternoon <laughs> in supporting the Prime Minister, Minister for Finance, on the presentation of this income tax amendment. Because as was said earlier on, it targets a number of individuals who engage in casual labor, casual contractual work, who occasionally are engaged by government to undertake works within our communities. Whether it is cutting of grass, as we often call it, or beautification, unclogging of drains, some say mitigation, or it is construction of retaining walls and other structural um, elements so as to enhance and protect our environment. Most of those persons, Mr. Speaker, are called upon once they get a contract, a secure a contract from the government, are called upon to pay 10%. But it's even more than that, Mr. Speaker. In some instances, an individual who probably is having a social challenge, who is attempting not to rob, but rather to earn some money to help themselves, probably medical assistance, medical attention, they need some money. And they, they come for, they've come forward and we've attempted to assist them. And I recall, Mr. Speaker, on one occasion, and we have several of those instances where individuals come with those cases. And in one instance, a sickler who needed treatment came to the ministry for assistance in the form of a small contract, as we call it. And so he was given a contract for $1,500. That's what we could have afforded. He needed some money, and so we gave him $1,500. He himself could not have performed the contract because of his health condition. And so he got three individuals with weed eaters to assist him. Each of them, each of them charging him $250. $250 working for two days to do the job. So just, just, just do the maths on this. The one five is all over. And then he was called upon, he negotiated of course and got, um, got them to reduce the price. But by the time he was finished, he came back to me, Mr. Speaker, and said, Sir, I need another contract because I didn't make any money. I can't pay the bill. So you have that challenge because the departments of government and the officials of government and some institutions are insensitive to the social need. Very insensitive. And wouldn't hear a thing or understand anything except what's written in the law. And so the poor sickler had to accept what he got and I had to meet the balance. But Mr. Speaker, there are other issues that down the road, this caring government whose mantra has been putting people first, and I say it in a different way, for people and country. We have to also look at some other instances, some other um, areas which also affect those, those um, casual contractors. You give an individual a contract to do what we call the caretaker program. And some of them don't earn no more than $1,680, maybe $2,000. And he's trying to get that job done because he wants the money, he has to go and do something. It's every other month maybe we offer those, those, those um, assignments, those works, and he's doing his work, and his weed eater kicks a pebble, damages the windshield of a vehicle, and the owner says, you have to replace my vehicle. It costs $3,000.
So now we now have to begin to start thinking of how do we indemnify those individuals. And probably going down the road for a caring government, we need to now look and see how can we have a kind of national insurance providing indemnity for those small workers. So that once you get a contract with the government, you will be allowed to sign up for the contract and to be indemnified under a particular arrangement without having to put out the kind of money we're talking about. Because this is a real thing. It is a real thing and it happens all the time. Damage to equipment, damage to vehicles. And so I believe, Mr. Speaker, that what we have done there, which is an experience that, have, that we have been having for many years, and no government have come up with a resolution to it. No government. I recall, Mr. Speaker, the day we discussed it in Cabinet, what seemed to have been an exercise to just save a few hundred dollars for a few little people, we spent probably two and a half, if not three hours, arguing it, clinically debating it in the Cabinet, and trying to find ways and means of solving the problem not because we are the ones experiencing the problem, but because the people themselves are experiencing the problem. The pain of it, the pain of these little people when they get a little contract of the 1,005, 2,005, and so happy, and then they stop with this 10% of $250, plus they have one or two other persons depending on them to get that money. That pain, we have brought some level of relief. And I do hope that for those who will now benefit, will understand what it takes for a government to be conscious of their needs and to make a determined effort, no matter what, to ensure that there is resolution to their own problem. But also, Mr. Speaker, in doing so, we need to encourage them. Encourage them, as my colleague early on said, to organize themselves, structure themselves, ensure that they organize themselves into small businesses, get advice, seek advice, and work towards building an organization that we all can be proud of. Too often, Mr. Speaker, our, our informal sector seem to spend a lot of time doing things, working hard, but not working smart. And we as a government, as you've seen, whether it's the youth economy or through the MSME, all of those programs, what you have seen is an attempt to formalize the informal and to get our people serious more responsible and making a positive contribution. So, Mr. Speaker, this short intervention is to state that we heard the people, we listened to the people, and we've responded to the call, a call for relief, a call of justice, a call that we hope will encourage them to work harder and make their contribution to this country. I thank you, Mr. Speaker.